Hey friends, Tony of TL Yarn Crafts here. So we're barely past Easter and I noticed that one of my favorite yarn companies, Lion Brand, has been busy cranking out lots of new yarns this year. So I decided to splurge on a big box of them just to try them out because you know, why not? <laughs> For each yarn, I'm giving it my initial reaction, likes and dislikes, and rounding it out with my rating between one and 10 hooks. Now let's get to it. The first yarn is called True Boo. With the spring coming in hot, I've been seeing a lot more knitters and crocheters giving this yarn a try. True Boo is a category three DK weight yarn made from 100% rayon from bamboo. It's running $6 a ball for 241 yards, which is pretty good. It's got a decent color range too. I'm getting some super saturated pastel vibes with plenty of blues, greens, and purples. Upon first glance, the first thing you notice about True Boo is how shiny it is. The LB website says it has a subtle sheen, but honey, there is nothing subtle about this. Now, once I got past the shininess, I consider that the yarn likely would have some amazing drape. Heavier fibers like bamboo can give you the movement that you're looking for, even in lightweight tops and wraps. Once I started working with the yarn, I did notice a little bit of splitting, but it wasn't really a deal breaker. I realized I just need to use a wood hook for a bit more grip than this metal one. What I really liked about this yarn are the seasonal opportunities. I'm imagining some lacy tops, flowy triangle scarves, even a spring blanket could be great for a yarn like this. You could even scrap the flowy idea altogether and make a spring sweater or a cardigan. With the shade range of this DK weight yarn, you've got a lot of options. Now, as much as I wanted to like this yarn, I kind of couldn't get past how shiny it was. There's nothing inherently wrong with the shine, it's just not for me and I don't see myself reaching for a yarn like this for my next project. Also, she's a bit slippery. I imagine that it'll be hard to maintain gauge for the first few rows and I definitely would have to change hooks to use this yarn properly. So overall, I'll have to give this yarn six hooks out of 10. There's a lot of opportunity for a yarn like this and it's pretty reasonably priced for bigger projects like garments and shawls, but it's just not one I'd reach for from my stash over and over and it doesn't give me those really luxe vibes that make me want to use it for something super special. I might be way off base here, but True Boo, mm, she just ain't for me. Next up, I wanted to try Summer Kiss. I was attracted to the bright color palette and the unique dots of color throughout the ball. Summer Kiss is a category four worsted weight cotton and polyester blend, which costs $6.99 per ball. It has an I-cord construction and features a bright main color, then some small spots of coordinating colors dotted throughout the ball. All of the colors come off pretty bold, but there is a cornflower blue and a gray for our neutral babes. So, initial reactions. Um, I thought it was a pretty cool concept to intersperse some complementary colors in the ball, and I've always been a fan of i construction, and it's used in a really unique way here. So, kudos to LB. And I do like a yarn that's bold for the sake of being bold, but if I can be honest with you and myself, I'm really not a fan of Summer Kiss. It's not especially soft to the touch, so garments are completely out. And it just didn't inspire me right out of the box, so I might have given up on it. So Summer Kiss isn't all bad. I did like that this yarn didn't split at all while I was working with it, and I didn't come across any tangles while the yarn was feeding from the inside of the ball. Honestly, the crochet experience itself was actually really nice, and I was able to maintain gauge throughout. But sadly, I just couldn't get past how stiff this yarn was, and I imagine my poor little fingers would really dry out from the constant rubbing of this rough yarn. So I feel kind of bad, but I have to give Summer Kiss three out of 10 hooks. LB suggests that this yarn is kid friendly and recommends making garments and accessories. I am just not seeing the vision here. My only suggestion would be to make some various home goods or even some pet items since this yarn does seem like it would be pretty durable. Moving on, here's Low Tide, which I was really excited to get my hands on. Low Tide is a level four worsted weight yarn and one ball runs you $6.99, but you'll get your money's worth with 306 yards per ball. It has a loose chainette construction, which complements the muted beachy vibe of the color palette. Honestly, it was kind of a struggle not to get one of each of these colors. They are right up my alley. My initial reaction to this yarn was 100% positive. It's smooth to the touch, and I knew the chainette construction would make it easy to crochet with since we wouldn't have any splitting. The blend of acrylic and polyester makes this yarn pretty lightweight, but it doesn't feel plasticky like some poly blend yarns can. 
Just like I thought, this yarn is a dream to crochet with. It glides out of the ball and has great tension with my favorite metal hook. I expect that larger projects will have really good drape and you could even drop your hook size to get some structure in more involved garments like tops or even sweaters. And I was pleased to see that Low Tide has great bounce and even good stitch memory, which is sometimes hard to achieve with crochet. On the negative side, this yarn was a little bit slippery right at the beginning. Once I got past working in the starting chain though, I was good to go, but it was a little bit dodgy there for a moment. I also had a little bit of yarn barf at the beginning, which is super annoying. All of the yarn on the very inside was a bit tangled up together, which was not a fun way to start a project. After giving it a try, Low Tide gets 8 hooks out of 10 from me. I'm excited to get some more colors and to try out bigger projects to see how it behaves. I'll likely use a hook a little bit smaller than they recommend just to get the kind of texture and gauge that I like. Or I might even double up this yarn for some baskets or rugs. This is really feeling like it's going to be my go-to spring yarn. Here I have Shimmery, a cake yarn with soft color transitions and a thread of shimmer throughout. Shimmery is a level five bulky weight, mainly acrylic yarn with a metallic thread categorized as other. You're gonna spend $7.99 for one cake and you'll get 219 yards out of it. It's a single ply wool looking yarn with a muted color palette of neutral shades with browns, blacks, blues, and purples. If you've been around the Lion Brand block, you can likely clock Shimmery as the slightly better looking sister of Scarfy. The colorways and construction feel almost identical, except Scarfy is in a ball and Shimmery is in a cake. For those not familiar with this yarn, it's smooth to the touch and has a look of single ply wool yarn, but you'll know the difference as soon as you touch it. So I really like that the actual shimmer was pretty subtle even after working it up. Also, it's not a scratchy strand of shimmer. Some metallic threads and yarns can be pretty irritating to crochet with or to wear close to your skin, but Shimmery does a good job of not sacrificing wearability for shine. The resulting crocheted swatch had really good gauge, and I could tell that the color transitions within the cake would be smooth, which I always hope for. I was honestly torn about this yarn though. First was the color palette. If you're gonna repackage a yarn that already exists, at least try to spice it up with a fresh palette. Next was the shimmer. It was so subtle on an already pretty dull yarn that I figured it would probably get lost or look out of place in a finished piece. Last was the whole idea of taking a yarn we already know and love, putting it in a cake with 1% of shimmer and then slapping a new label on it. It feels a bit like a cop out and that can't go unsaid. Shimmery is getting five out of 10 hooks from me. Sure, it will be great for wearables and blankets and especially for accessories like hats and scarves, but honestly, I just recommend using Scarfy. You get more out of the ball and you get way more color choices. Now here is where I got really excited. This is Mandala Roving, a stunning cake yarn that gives you everything you love about the original Mandala yarn, but in a single ply. It's a level three DK weight, 100% acrylic yarn with 215 yards in each 150 gram cake. For $8, you're getting five colors in each cake. The colors are positioned for a gentle ombre effect with complementary neutrals that are literally blowing my mind. My initial reaction to this yarn was just a moment of silence for my bank account because she's about to be working overtime. I love this yarn. It is super smooth to the touch, which made me want to work with it immediately. It does have a very subtle shine, which I was okay with. And you can already tell that the color transitions will be stark. I'm usually not a fan of that, but the colors blend so well that I figured I could get over it. All of the cakes transition from deep on the outside to light on the inside with perfect neutrals in between. I could go on and on and on. While crocheting my swatch, I noticed I was able to crochet pretty fast because of the even tension and smooth texture of this yarn. The stitch definition was superb, especially considering that this is a single ply yarn. It's not fuzzy like some roving yarns can be, and the benefit of that medium twist really shows up once it's worked. I only worked a small swatch for this video, but I am dying to get to the next color. This yarn was well on its way to a 10 out of 10 hooks rating until I found a knotted color change. Finding knots in my yarn really sets me on edge and I was super frustrated to find one here of all places. 
Other than the knot, I really loved everything about this yarn, so I'm giving it 9 out of 10 hooks. It's reasonably priced and you get a lot of yarn in one cake. The colors are very good and the project opportunities are endless. Baby items, garments, accessories, shawls, you name it, mandala roving fits the bill. The last yarn for today is Off the Hook Faux Fur. Loop yarns are still very in vogue right now and they're especially valuable with so many people looking to make quick and easy craft projects. Off the Hook Faux Fur is a loop yarn reminiscent of Lion Brand's Go for Faux. Each 200 gram ball comes with plenty of loops to help you make a cuddly faux fur fabric. One ball sets you back 13 bucks and you get to pick from five color options, four realistic ones plus a fun pink. I feel like the folks at Lion Brand were sitting in a room saying, what yarn can we create that Tony will love and hate at the same time? And now we have Off The Hook Faux Fur. Look, I'm not a big novelty yarn fan, and this yarn brings together two current trends, loop yarn and faux fur. I'm sad to say it, but I kinda can't resist it. The colors are pretty consistent with the original Gopher Faux, and the yarn is super soft and fluffy. I like that this yarn felt similar, if not exactly like the Gopher Faux we've all been using. It also helps that you don't need any tools to make something fun with this yarn. It's easy to start and finish a project in no time. And like normal Faux Fur yarn, finished pieces look high end with no discernible stitches or rows. This yarn was a little slippery to get going in the beginning, and it was a little bit tricky to see the live stitches once I kept going. My advice if you're using this yarn is to make sure you pull those live loops up nice and high when you're working on your project. Also, this yarn seemed to catch every imperfection in my nails, so trim and buff your nails before working with this yarn. It really pains my inner yarn snob to say it, but I have to give this yarn 9 out of 10 hooks. It's the kind of yarn that you can't overthink. It's just fun. It doesn't take itself too seriously, and the finished piece looks expensive compared to what you're actually investing in. I will say a large project could get pricey, but something small like a rug or a pillow can still be reasonable. So, which of these yarns are your favorites? Drop down in the comments and let me know. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more crochet pro tips, patterns, and product reviews. I hope you'll try these and plenty of other new yarns from our friends at Lion Brand. I'm Tony, and I'll see you next time.